we know from a huge body of research in neuroscience a tremendous amount about how we are all wired in making decisions. It's really remarkable. Uh, in the last 10 or 15 years, the field of neuroscience has exploded in terms of the insights that have come out of that. And what we did is we went back to that research and we immersed ourselves there. And then we also studied cognitive psychology, another hot topic. And then what we did is we studied 80, over 80, strategic decisions uh, on, on our own. And we put all of that together to try to understand what happens in organizations and to try to understand you know, what goes wrong and, and why. And some of the questions that we've tried to uh, uh, answer and that I think we can gain some insight into when we take this lens of neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and decision making are fundamental questions that have been in the newspapers for, uh, uh, for, for a year and counting. Uh, why did Dick Fold refuse to sell Lehman Brothers until it was really too late? And it was actually just September 13th and 14th of last year when Lehman went out of business. Very, very fresh. Um, why did Ken Lewis of Bank of America dramatically overpay for Merrill Lynch? And the price is still being paid in a variety of ways, including Ken Lewis's own job. Uh, why did so many smart people invest with Bernie Madoff? Why did they do that? Why was the federal government response to Hurricane Katrina so so slow. And I'm going to talk about Hurricane Katrina in a little bit more detail uh, as, we, as we go along. Uh, why are 100-year-old newspapers going out of business? This one really, really gets me. Why, why so many tremendous newspapers have been around forever? Why are they going out of business? And one clue to that, by the way, is when you blame your customer for the reasons why you're not doing well, it's probably a bad sign. And that's what they're doing. Uh, they're blaming their customer because people don't want to buy a newspaper. They want, to, they want to get their news in a variety of other ways. And that's the customer's fault by definition. Anyone who's in business who blames their customer knows that's not a defensible or sustainable approach, is it? Why did so many bankers keep doubling down with subprime? A big question that's still being asked by a lot of people. But really, if you put it all together, why do good leaders make bad decisions? I mean, that's the summary question. And that's the question in many ways that has driven a lot of my work over the last dozen years to try to understand why does that happen. And as I mentioned, the answers in many ways are encapsulated by our brains. Our brains are wired for action. We know this again from tremendous amount of research and there's two things that I want to, um, I want to highlight about, about this. Number one is what I call one plan at a time. Think about how um, maybe you learned this at Simon, maybe you know this from your, from your careers. Uh, how do people make decisions? What is a, quote, rational decision-making process? Well, we might say that we'll identify um, a goal or, uh, or some challenges or opportunities. Uh, we'll go collect some data, think about this a little bit, and then we're going to uh, identify a set of alternatives. And then we'll evaluate those alternatives, pros, cons, costs, benefits, and then we'll come up with the best solution, the optimal solution. That's kind of your rational decision-making model. The truth of the matter is, hardly anyone ever does that, even when you think you're doing it. More often than not, we have this one plan at a time in our heads. That one plan at a time basically is the solution. We know where we're going. We know what it is we want to, uh, we want to have as our answer, and we will get ourselves there in a variety of ways. A number of people in business schools, such as this one and my own, go into consulting. Well, consulting is a great business because CEOs are hiring you to justify the decision they had in mind ahead of time. <laughs> and you are providing the official justification guidance. So it's a very good business because our brains work this way and it's not about to change. We are wired for action, for quick, uh, for quick action, for this one plan at a time. And actually, if you think about this, if our ancestors saw this uh, tall, striped animal bounding towards us in the tall grass, and they formed a committee to talk it over, what do you think happened? They weren't around to pass their genes on to all of us. And so there was a tremendous premium on making quick decisions, on coming up with a solution to a problem, on identifying this one plan at a time. It made a lot of sense in a much simpler world. We are, of course, living in a little bit more complex world than that. And sometimes we still fall into the same traps. Second point, emotional tagging. I have found really as I've gotten into this and talked to a lot of people, um, really been struck by how powerful emotions are in decision making. 
Uh, now, that shouldn't surprise anyone. If we just take pause of our own lives for a second, we all can imagine plenty of examples when emotions drove us to do something in a particular way. But the way I have this in mind, what I want, kind of the visual I want you to think about is you have a decision situation, you're looking for how to deal with it, and in your brains, we all have a file cabinet with different folders. Some of those folders have big red writing on there with, with, with a skull and crossbones, which is to say, don't do that. And we're not going to take that folder out of the file cabinet of our brains because the last time we did that, our boss never let us forget it, or we lost the job, or we lost the contract, or we didn't get the sale. But there are other folders in our brains that have nice happy faces around them, and we're going to go towards those folders to come up with the solutions to problems time and time again because that got us to the winner's circle before. And that's why, in many instances, people tend to keep on doing the stuff that got them successful in the past. We, can't, we tend to keep on doing those things that got us to the winner's circle. It's human nature, after all. It's how our brains are, are wired. Our brains are wired for action, quick planning, one plan at a time, not this kind of complicated decision-making model and the power of, 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 of emotions, uh, emotions playing a big, big role. Uh, if some of this sounds somewhat related to some other things you may have heard of, I want to make that connection explicit. How many of you have read the book Blink? Seeing about a third, a quarter of the hands going up. Blink is a, a great book by Malcolm Gladwell. It was published a few years ago. And the thesis of Blink is, is straightforward, right? The thesis is people make quick decisions and often it works. And Blink, if you're not familiar with the book, referred specifically to intuition quick decision making, straight from the gut, to use the Jack Welch uh, term. Uh, uh, blink means people often make these quick decisions, not with long analysis. They rely on intuition, they rely on their gut, and it works. But actually, if you read, if you read Blink carefully, what you discover is, yes, there's a lot of examples from different walks of life where this quick decision making was, was pretty good. But there's also a bunch of other examples where it actually led to disaster. I mean, there's the example of, of the cops in New York shooting an unarmed, unarmed man one evening because they made assumptions about who he was and where he was coming from. So there are a lot of other examples in Blink where, le where, where relying on this kind of quick decision making, this intuition, actually leads to disaster. So a pretty important question arises, right? When is it a good idea and when is it not a good idea? And that's the frame I want to use in describing some of the key lessons and some of the key findings from this work for all of you today. Uh, in many ways, what we're trying to answer is under what conditions is blink, intuition, straight from the gut, really a good idea, more likely to lead to successful results? And under what conditions do you need to uh, think again, if you will, take a step back and be more analytical, collect more data, be, uh, uh, monitor that decision more carefully, provide additional oversight or anything else that's kind of part of our management, um, management toolkit.